to get right to this man next to me, uh, Maryland Congressman Elijah Cummings, uh, who represents this district. This is his home. Welcome, sir. It's a pleasure to talk to Welcome you. Welcome to Baltimore. Um, I love Baltimore. I've been here a number of times. First of all, did you just hear the, the Orioles game is apparently on, but closed to the public is the latest we're hearing. Do you know anything about I that? I don't know anything about that, but um, that would be very disappointing to me uh, because I want our city to go forward. Um, I don't think that uh, we should stop doing what we normally do. And um, But if that's the decision of the powers that be, that's above my paycheck. Okay. Um, let's talk about your pay. Let's talk about what's <laughs> happening currently here. Uh, I don't know if you've slept at all. Not, no. Um, no. Have you been in contact with the mayor um, and the governor? And as far as tonight is the first night of this 10 p.m. curfew, we've seen pockets of people, especially in West Baltimore, right at North and Pennsylvania, for the most part peaceful. Have you had a chance to, to walk around? Where have you been today? Uh, I've been all over, but I spent a lot of time at Pennsylvania North. That's uh, where the, CVS the Yeah, was. where the CVS was. And... Um, I, I got to tell you, when I went and saw uh, the burnt out CVS, it was extremely painful um, because I realized that a lot of people are in pain. And we have a situation here where there were some people who were mourning the death of Freddie Gray, the tragic death. But there are others who uh, were opportunists right. who took advantage of a situation and committed some criminal acts. I don't care how you look at it. That's what happened. And um, I think about the senior citizens who now don't have a drugstore. That's been calling me all day. They've lost their jobs. Yeah, that's they, that's, that's right. this disconnect with, it sounds like, this, this group of younger people mm -hmm. who started this, yeah. perhaps not realizing the ramifications. And, you know, I was reading, I've just read so much about what, you know, gen I don't know if it's generational shifts, but, you know, the older folks in this city are saying, uh, everyone wants justice, but it's like this manifestation of how they're seeking it is so totally at odds. Yeah, yeah. And I, well, I, I do believe that young people, uh, and not so young, see this Freddie Gray case, uh, and it's extremely upsetting because there's so many question marks. When you have a police force that writes a report that says uh, Mr. Gray was arrested without force or without incident, and his neck is broken, his throat is crushed, and his and his spinal cord is severed, and then he dies. It's hard for people to put that together, and so so you have confusion, you have pain, you have frustration. But you know, and and and, and the foundation of all of that is the 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 deaths of all the black men who were unarmed throughout the country. And that's that's the thing. I was talking to uh, an editor with uh, the New Republic, Jamil Smith, and he wrote a whole piece about how week after week after week, we keep seeing these videos, yes. right, of these young black men being killed. And his fear is that Americans are becoming desensitized. Yeah. He wants to make sure that after every single time we see these tragedies, that mm -hmm. we stop and you being a con Mm -hmm. We have this national conversation, but then people such as yourself make sure there is actual change. That's Where's right. the change? That's right. well, I'm well, sick of talking well, about it. Well, I agree. I'm sick of talking about it, too. And that's why just a week ago uh, at Howard University, Republicans and Democrats joined together uh, from the Senate and the House uh, and began to talk about the various types of legislation we are proposing. Like kind of, what? Like the Camera Act, making sure that the police have cameras making sure that we have good statistics with regard to the deaths that come to individuals while being arrested or in the custody of police, uh, looking at our grand jury system uh, and looking at the whole issue of sentencing. One of the reasons why people are so angry, uh, they, they here I know of people who are sitting in prison right now yeah. for selling marijuana when you can go to Colorado and they sell thousands of dollars. I worth. had that conversation you know, on my show, sir, last week, where people are furious, and then the question comes: Well, once it perhaps even becomes legalized nationwide, what about all these people who are serving time? That's exactly for, right. For selling it out. That's exactly. And so when people when people see that, I mean, it's it's very upsetting. They, they, their freedom is gone, while folks in Colorado sit back with cash. I, I mean, all over the television, making a lot of money. I understand. So so my point is, is that we've got work to do. Another thing that has to be done here is we've really got to look at our police department. 
Um, but in what sense? I mean, we talk about training. We talk about having officers. I was talking to a city councilman here last week who was saying, Brooke, these people have to live in the communities. There's no emo emotional or there's a lack of emotional investment. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these young people, I mean, I've been talking about this so much, a lot of these young people, and I love our nation's veterans, but some of them are coming back from war. Mm -hmm. They don't know the communities, and they're ready to do battle. Yeah, they need. They, they definitely need training, um, better training. They need better recruitment. And that's why I've been asking uh, DOJ to come in and do uh, a pattern and practice investigation, somewhat similar to the one done at Ferguson. We really need to look at our police department from top to bottom and bottom to top to figure out exactly what is, is being done wrong. Keep in mind, some of these problems are systemic. Right. You know, we have rules, but when the rules are being broken, for example, not seat belting in a man uh, who is you know, arrested. In a prisoner or, transport van. Right, or not right. giving medical attention. Right. There it's are rules already to that. Right. So that makes you wonder, well, how is the system failing? We've got work to do. Congressman, I hope I don't have to talk to you anytime soon over this, but I, I wish you luck, Thank hopefully you. enacting some of the change, because Thank people you. are obviously incredibly frustrated. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, coming up next, here on CNN, much more. On